Timing and spacing is the most important principle of animation. In fact, I'd say that out of all the 12 principles of animation, this is the only one that is truly fundamental to the art of telling stories with motion. Once I became fully aware of how to manipulate time and space in my animations, so many things that I thought were difficult to animate, I realized were actually very simple. So let's jump right in and break down the details of timing and spacing. Be sure to leave me a like and let's get started. Draw, paint, animate. It's the all-in-one studio for you to go create. Listen up, artists, you can get started for free with three months of Clip Studio Paint. When the brush strokes like real bristle And every touch of the pen flows real nimble Feels like I'm at home, but it even goes with you You can get it on your phone, or your tablet, or your windows On your Macintosh computer, which is dope for Apple users Sick digital art app solution User interface is fluid, keeps your eyes on what you're doing Even up to date with every hue switch, that's intuitive Explore the assets and more, it's massive, so many facets I speed and pass it with auto actions, I'm getting faster And I've adapted like it's my natural habitat I've mastered this app and I actually find it fantastic You can draw, paint, anime It's the all-in-one studio for you to go create Listen up, artist, you can get started for free With three months of Clip Studio Paint Draw, paint, anime It's the all-in-one studio for you to go create Listen up, artist, you can get started for free With three months of Clip Studio Paint so why is timing and spacing fundamental to animation? Well, because without time and without space, you can't move. We need those two ingredients in order to make motion possible. So in terms of 2D animation, timing refers to when a drawing occurs in a sequence and spacing refers to where a drawing occurs in a sequence. The standard frame rate for film and animation is 24 frames per second, so we'll use that in this video. That means we can show the audience or the viewer a maximum of 24 pictures or drawings every second. So since there are 24 frames per every second, we know that we'll see frame one before we see frame 24 because these frames are numbered with respect to time. The spacing in an animation is where on the canvas your drawing appears, whether it's on the right or on the left, up in the corner, etc. For example, say we have an object spaced to the left on frame one, but then spaced to the right on frame 24. Frames one and 24 are the timing. Left and right is the spacing. And when we hit play, what results is an object that looks like it's moving from the left to the right. So as animators, we use a combination of timing and spacing to describe when an object moves, where it moves, and especially how it moves. This is why timing and spacing is so principal to animation. Okay, now that we know how timing and spacing work together, we can delve a little deeper. Let's start with timing. Remember, timing is when your drawings occur. Basically, what frames do your images appear on? First of all, to understand timing, we need to distinguish the difference between frames and drawings. There's two things we have to focus on, FPS and DPS. FPS is your frames per second, meaning the number of images that your viewer is seeing every single second. And DPS is your drawings per second, how many drawings you actually make per every second. So if we make one drawing per every frame, which is animating on ones, our FPS equals 24 and our DPS equals 24. So if we make one drawing every other frame or animating on twos, our FPS is still 24, but our DPS is 12. We're still at 24 FPS, we just made half of the drawings. You can animate on ones, twos, or 17ths if you like, and you can still be at the same 24 FPS. The FPS, the frames per second, sets the maximum DPS, the drawings per second. So just look at the FPS as the maximum amount of pictures per second. You don't always have to animate on ones. So before we move on, why animate on different timings? Ones, twos, threes, fourteenths. Here are some tips. Ones are best when it comes to animating fast actions. For example, if you only have five frames to animate a run cycle, it may look strange if you tried to animate it on twos. You're only drawing on one, three, and five. That's only three poses. If you animate on ones, you have a total of five poses or five drawings you can make. So that'll let you get in all your necessary run poses so your animation looks natural. Beyond animating fast actions, twos cut your maximum workload in half while still providing a very smooth animation experience. I usually animate on twos because of this. Animating on threes is economic. Again, you can still achieve smooth animation on threes as long as you space your drawings wisely. We'll cover that later on. 
The point I'm trying to make is this. Higher drawings per second does not automatically mean smoother, better looking animation. In order to achieve smooth, appealing animation, we also need to get familiar with some basic spacing principles. We know that timing is when an object moves. Now spacing is where your object moves on the canvas. Objects that move in space obey the laws of motion physics called mechanics. Now this video isn't about mechanics, so without getting too deep, there are two basic ways an object can move in the universe via constant motion or acceleration. Constant motion or uniform motion means that an object moves at a consistent rate. When you're animating this, the distance between each frame is the same. Now acceleration or easing motion means an object is speeding up, slowing down or turning. So when you're animating this, that means the distance between each frame is increasing or decreasing. For simplicity though, I like to break down movement into four types. This helps simplify the animation process for me. Using these individually and in combination with one another will allow you to animate any motion you can possibly think of. If you'd like to learn how, click the video linked above in the card. So those are some of the basic ways that objects can move, but there's a lot more to learn about spacing. For example, in a typical animation workflow, you'll start by drawing your keys, extremes, and breakdowns. Then, using your types of motion knowledge, you'll figure out which type of motion would go best between each point. Say you have an ease in, ease out from A to B using the breakdown C as a midpoint. You're animating on twos and you have 17 frames total. Point A is on frame one, point B is on frame 17, and point C is on frame nine. So let's start with the ease in portion. We draw frame seven between a and C, frame five between A and seven, and three between A and five. And now you have an ease in. So we just go and do the opposite for the ease out portion and voila, we have an ease in, ease out. But hey, did you notice something? Every time we drew our in-betweens, we measured half of the space between one point and another, but we could divide up this space in other ways too. Here are three common ways to divide up space between drawings. The first way is halves, which is what we just did, taking half of the space between each point. Halves are great for when you have a ton of frames to fill because your brain's pretty good at measuring an equal amount of space on either side, at least my brain is. The second way is thirds. Taking a third of the space is great for increasing momentum quickly or decreasing momentum quickly. Thirds have a snappiness to them. And finally, the third common way is by favors. Now favors are by far the snappiest. Instead of providing a specific measurement, such as a half or a third, you just make the drawing favor another drawing, meaning it's just moving a little bit towards its destination. Favors are the best when it comes to increasing momentum quickly and decreasing momentum quickly. So if you're in a pinch and you only got four frames to make an ease in, ease out, just favor both keyframes and there you go. That sounds great, but how do you put this timing and spacing knowledge to use? Well, after you draw your keys, extremes, and breakdowns, you can identify what you want to happen in between these core drawings. So I'm using Clip Studio to animate today. First, we have to decide how much time we want our action to take. So if you don't already have a time slot for your animation, try acting out the motion in real life and then time yourself while doing it. So I have a stopwatch here. And as I click this stopwatch, I'm just gonna imitate the action I'm animating to see how much time it will take. Okay, so I got just under one second. And now you can take the amount of seconds that you end up with and multiply it by your FPS in order to find out how many frames your motion will take to complete. So in our case, we have 24 FPS. I got just under a second, so that means I could choose my timing just to be 24 frames total. But since I got just under, I think 17, which is what mine is set to right now will work just fine. So next in the timing phase, we have to space out our frames on the timeline according to how we want the motion to appear within the time slot we came up with. It happens slowly, that looks good. But when he slams this hammer down, I want this to be relatively quick. So let's move this frame, that maybe. I'll turn off the colors for now. Just focus on the line work. So I plan to animate this on twos. So we have one frame to draw in between one and one A. And then between one A and two, we actually have two frames to draw. So I want this to, this wind up to be a little slower. Maybe just one in between, between this extreme and this keyframe. So I think that timing looks 
really good. I'm gonna go with this. Okay, now that we've come up with a time slot for our animation, and we spaced out our frames according to the way we want the motion to occur, we can now plan our in-betweens using a timing chart. A timing chart basically describes the transitions from each chord drawing to the next. For example, is the transition from A to A extreme an ease in? Is it an ease out or is it both? Is it constant motion? Are there no in-betweens at all? Now is the time to decide all of that. It really should be called a timing and spacing chart since we're charting the spatial relationships between each point. So from A to the A extreme. I think I'm gonna do a simple ease out because we only have one frame to fill in and that is frame number three since we're animating on twos. Now from the A extreme to B, the B extreme, we have two frames to fill. I want this hammer slam to be very impactful so I'm gonna put a couple of favors toward A which is an ease in or an ease out depending how you look at it. <laughs> really it's, it's starting slow is what I'm saying. Okay and then from the B extreme to B I'm going to make, let's see, let's draw this. I'll draw it this way since I want to interrupt that drawing. B extreme to B, our in-between will favor B so we can put all this motion to rest. One last thing before we get animating is we can name our in-betweens. And the way we name in-betweens is according to what frame number they land on. So this in-between lands on frame three, so we'll call it three. This in-between, which is a favor, it's gonna be on frame seven, and then we have one on frame nine. Seven will come first before nine, and then nine. And then lastly, we have an in-between on frame 13. All right, now that we have our chart written down, let's start animating. So guys, if you ever worked really hard on an animation, but it just didn't turn out right, I'll bet you that the issue has to do with timing and spacing, which really isn't that surprising when you think about it. After all, motion itself is just a change in location or orientation of a body with time. Without space and time, we can't move. So it makes sense that when you're trying to make characters come to life through motion pictures, that a hearty knowledge of timing and spacing is essential. Thank you all so much for watching, guys. This is a lot of information to digest, but that's why it's so important to know the fundamentals. Do not skip them like I did. With that said, I will see you all next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace.